The Lord be with you. Welcome in the name of the Creator and the Redeemer and the Holy Spirit of life to this online worship as we gather as the people of Christ on this second Sunday after Pentecost. I am Pastor Anita Saroop and welcome to those joining us by Zoom and welcome to those of you who are watching the YouTube recording um, afterwards. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are welcomed by the invitation of Christ. The service outline is in the bulletin in the newsletter that you were sent. Um, if you click on it and open it into another uh, uh, window, it opens. It's complicated, but just to, to remedy that, we've got the entire liturgy on the screen and uh, we will be um, scrolling upwards. So everything that you need for today's worship is on the screen today. Uh, the hymns, the, the liturgy, everything. We're grateful to Gair, who is going to help us today with um, uh, remembering our baptism, and uh, to Lorraine and Vanessa, who will lead us in music, to Susan, who will be hosting us uh, by Zoom, to Mark, who will be our lector, and Linda, our intercessor. And a give thanks to all of you who have been gathered by the Holy Spirit into worship today. We celebrate Holy Communion at Spirit of Life today. So if you haven't already done so, um, get a piece of bread. It, it uh, doesn't have to be a fresh baked loaf or anything, just whatever you have nearby, a piece of bread and a little bit of grape juice or some wine um, and have it ready nearby. And we will have, we will partake in God's holy meal together. We worship on the traditional lands of the First Nations of Turtle Island, specifically the Coast Salish people, the unceded lands of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh nations. And we pray for humility, confession, forgiveness, and God's guidance in our ongoing and sometimes disruptive and sometimes painful journey of reconciliation. We'll begin our service this morning with our thanksgiving at the font. And the words are on page 70, if you happen to have a ELW uh, red hymnal with you. Um, but the words will be on the screen here. The words are on the screen and we'll be using number two. And uh, Gare will resume his, his liturgical duties at the font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with the water from the rock and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us and the deep shall not swallow us up for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples baptizing in the name of the creator and the redeemer and the spirit of life. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sin in this cleansing water. 
clothe the baptized with Christ and claim your children, no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll sing together our gathering hymn. It's hymn number 665, and uh, the words will be on the screen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with This is the Feast on page 169. The words will be on the screen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be peace. 
Let us pray. All powerful God in Jesus Christ, you turned death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We listen now for God's word. Our first lesson is from the book of 1 Samuel. All the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us the other, like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people and all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day. Forsaking me and serving other gods, so that also they, also they are, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice only. You shall solemnly warn them, and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking for him, asking him for a king. He said. These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be performer, per, perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one tenth of your grain and your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and be the, and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day, you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourself. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king over us so that we also may be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go before us and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord of Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Do not abandon the work of your hands. 
shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O oh Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Your love endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. The second lesson is from the book of 2 Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you to his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what, we, what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Hear what the Spirit of, is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. We welcome the gospel into our midst with our gospel. Alleluia. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Friends, the good news for this day is found in the Gospel of Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he is Beelzebul. And by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came. And standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. God of grace, 
your kingdom is near. And we struggle to see it. Bless these words proclaimed and by your Holy Spirit, move us in your justice and love for the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the Christ. Amen. This has not been an easy week for those of us who call Canada home. When the empirical evidence supporting long-standing Indigenous testimony that children died at Canada's residential school surfaced in Kamloops to Kamloops to Swapham, this week all of us who are non-Indigenous could no longer look away. Indigenous communities, elders, story keepers, Indigenous lawmakers, spiritual leaders, land defenders, scholars, language revitalizers, residential school su survivors, and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission have been telling us for decades and decades about the foundations of our country that are alive and well in the Indian Act and live and well in our crown land titles and alive and well in our public governance systems, alive and well in our biases and attitudes. And we as settler majority have not been able to hear it. To make matters worse, this news has not only made us pause and reflect on Canadian law and Canadian history and systemic structures, but as Christians, it has made us stop in our tracks as we consider the part the church and Christianity itself has had to play in the death of innocent children and the strong and vibrant indigenous spiritual culture. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. We hear the psalmist sing these words today and we wonder who are the cared for? Who are the haughty? And if God hears the cries of those suffering, even when we who are followers of Jesus cannot. This week's gospel text is not an easy word to hear, but it is a good and right and timely word to hear as we seek to process our faithful response to all of this in Christ. After weeks of departure through the season of Easter into the Feast of Pentecost and Trinity Sunday, here in the second Sunday of the very long, very green season after Pentecost, we find ourselves once again accompanied by the evangelist Mark. The setting of the gospel is a house in which Jesus is attempting to eat dinner after a long day. The lectionary reading begins mid-sentence recalling the huge frenzied crowd of Jewish and Gentiles alike desperate to get close to the man reported to possess power over sickness and demons. Now back in the first chapter of Mark, Jesus proclaimed the good news of God. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God or the realm of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus is not only proclaiming the inbreaking of the reign of God, but also lives into this inbreaking by driving out all that was death dealing, healing the sick, forgiving sins, and eating with tax collectors and all manner of sinners. To make us even more uncomfortable, Mark depicts Jesus actively challenging some of the practices of traditional religious leaders. For example, when Jesus forgave the sins of the paralytic, the scribes grumbled, it is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? In our text today, when Jesus overpowers the unclean spirits and drove them out, he is accused of being possessed by demons himself and belonging to the household of Beelzebul, which can be translated as the Lord of the flies, but we can safely assume it meant something that was not holy and akin to death. Now, we might pause here and celebrate that in itself, but the good news 
to any person or any community that has ever in the history of Christianity been labeled unclean or uncivilized or ungodly. Because according to Mark, if you've ever heard these words directed to you or your community, congratulations. You are in the company of Jesus who is being accused of the very same today. Jesus's family is also on the way to the house in order to bring him home because they're afraid that given what he's been up to, who he has been associating with, that this is just a further sign that he's completely lost it. The scribes from Jerusalem are also after him, considering him to be in league with Satan. And Jesus responds to this accusation with a series of short images. The first show that something divided against itself cannot stand. A kingdom, a house, Satan himself. A second image describes trying to tie up a strong man in order to plunder his house. Jesus condemns his detractors with very strong, very strongly before it is brought to his attention that his mother and his brothers and his sisters are outside. And Jesus responds to this announcement with a chilling rejection. They are not my family. And looking around him at the crowd of misfits and undesirables and misunderstood and forgotten amongst his relentlessly undiscerning disciples, he gestures widely and says, this is my family. Sometimes the good news of Jesus Christ is too elusive for those that are supposed to be closest to him, while for others it is like nourishment for the starving and life-giving water for the thirsty. It rarely seems elusive to the people that long to experience Jesus' promises of the inbreaking of God's kingdom the most. Over the past week, we have heard much discourse about where we go from here as a country, as a church, as those of us who prosper on this land, knowing what happened in Canada's residential schools. Indigenous leaders are warning us that this is only the beginning of the revelation and we'll need to brace ourselves to digest and comprehend all of it, to understand what seems incomprehensible. The same scribes and authorities who claim to understand God best did not know what to make of Jesus's message of love. The same family that was secured into Jesus's inner circle were not the ones to which he claimed affiliation. Jesus is clear about his message. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Yesterday was a good day. In the afternoon, about 10 of us gathered on the front patio of the church to make plans to create a community lunch program here at Spirit of Life. There were a few of us from the church, a few more of us from the Lutheran Manor, and a friend and church leader of the Synod who has graduated from the Indigenous Studies program at the Vancouver School of Theology and is currently, thanks be to God, pursuing a Master's of Divinity. The rain let up exactly before three o'clock. And so we sat in a circle and introduced ourselves. We shared with each other why we would want to put our energy into something like this. Now there were a lot of answers to this question, but the common thread that drew us all together was a sense of connection we have towards each other, towards humanity, how we all want the same kinds of things to feel care and love, to offer and to receive hospitality and community, to be safe, to be nourished and to feel belonging. Some said, I'm just here to see what this could be. Pragmatic expectation of God to act right here. Many of you know the idea for offering a one day a week community lunch here at the church and manor came from an introduction 
to a community program director at the Mount Pleasant Community Center. Lorelai has been running a lunch program out of a small room down the hall from the library, with a handful of volunteers and a lot of love for the community around her. When she came to Spirit of Life to meet with Darlene and Mark and I, I asked her if she was religious. She said, no. That surprised me because the way she expressed her call to feed those that are hungry, to show care and love in the community, reminded me of God's abundant grace and the kingdom of heaven that Jesus was declaring was so close to us and yet so elusive. Sometimes we are lucky enough to be given a glimpse of God's grace and the action of the Holy Spirit that moves and breathes around us all the time. Sometimes despite our failure to understand what is, what is of God and what isn't, we get that glimpse anyways. As a group, we tried to think of what we could offer at this lunch and considered all kinds of things like nutrition, like the storage and supply and all the other practical things that we'd need to plan for. Someone suggested we offer bannock, an indigenous flatbread that if any of you have ever tried before, you know is delicious. Bread, like the body of Christ, given to us as God's grace. Carrie, our new friend, piped up. We could totally do bannock. We could do barbecue salmon and bannock. I turned to her and I said, we have budget for salmon now? And she laughed and said, hey, I'm indigenous. I know how to make bannock and I have connections. And with that rushing wind of God's grace, we who gathered in a circle of unlikely community in God's moment had a launch day menu figured out to kick off the community lunch program. God has declared that God's kingdom has come near and it isn't too late to see things in a new way as the Holy Spirit guides us. How astonishing it is that Jesus does not abandon us as we awaken and see what has been right before our eyes the whole time. How astonishing it is to find ourselves over and over again at the foot of the cross of Christ with our hands outstretched, yearning for God's glorious and abundant grace, humbled by God's nearness even still. How good and right it is to remember that even in our deepest failures, God has redeemed our unbelief. God holds dear the ones whom God claims and continues to offer us life. May we remember this and never forget. Amen.
God's children, reconciled through you, our brother, one we knew with God the Father. Give us grace to live for others, serving all the friends and strangers, seeking justice, love, and mercy, till you come in final glory. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with our prayers. The response to the prayers today is hear our prayer. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for followers of Jesus all over the globe. Unify us in service of the gospel that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation. The gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration while human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear, that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we pray for all those grieving the discovery of the remains of 215 children who died at residential school to Kemloops Tixekwep. We pray for strength for Chief Roseanne Kashmir as she leads her people. We pray for all First Nations families who grieve the losses the First Peoples have endured on this land and the oppression they continue to face. We pray for all Indigenous and non-Indigenous people of this land to make right what has been wrong for the sake of our harmonious future together. And we pray for your guidance, grace, and mercy, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. We pray for the ways that we have caused harm to others, both intentional and unintentionally. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend your grace to more and more people and have others extend your grace to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our community at Spirit of Life, we pray for Annette, Eva, Susan, and Peter, 
Chu, Carolyn, Elizabeth M, Elizabeth N, Erica, Hunter, Ida, Ermgard, Ivor and Susie, Joyce, Lisa, Mike and family, to yet, Pastor Karen S, Isabel, Art, Anne, <laughs> Wendy and Danny, Alicia, Maritza, the Lutheran Manor residents, board and staff, and those we name in our hearts now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Brothers and sisters and family in Christ, the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to unmute for a moment and share a sign of peace with one another. Peace, peace to you all. Peace to everyone. Peace to you all. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you this time to, if you haven't already, uh, bring forth a piece of uh, bread and some wine as we partake in Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. As beloved children of a loving parent, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Beloved in Christ, receive our Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor always and give you peace. Amen. We sing together our sending hymn, hymn number 860. peace, joining with the Holy Spirit to love and serve the world. Thanks be to God. <laughs> I invite you to unmute and we can share um, just a few minutes to uh, <laughs> in fellowship, I guess, or longer. Uh, I just wanted to say 